So welcome to uh, another one of our series on the uh, Wikisite discussion series. Uh, this is a series that is sponsored by IFLA and the Wikisite project through a grant from the Wikimedia Foundation. And we are grateful to both IFLA and the Wikisite uh, project and the Wikimedia Foundation for the opportunity to uh, have these discussions about the role of Wikidata within um, the sphere of uh, librarianship. So today we are going to do things uh, a little bit differently. We are going to have a, a conversation around knowledge equity and I am just going to share my screen. Uh, so just give me a moment here as we switch screens. And um, I wanna welcome uh, Kareem Tharani to our discussion today about knowledge equity, libraries, metadata and Wikidata. Um, and I will introduce myself. So I'm Stacey Allison Casson. I'm an associate librarian at York University. I'm in the uh, Department of Student Learning and Academic Success. I have previously held positions um, in cataloging. Um, and, and an active member of the Wikidata community. Um, I also am a citizen of the Métis Nation of Ontario, which is uh, an Indigenous uh, community here in Canada where I live and um, I also then want to take a moment to acknowledge the land that I uh, live and work on which is um, held by uh, a treaty with the Mississauga of the Credit uh, First Nation and the land that I live on has been uh, the home of many other uh, Indigenous nations including the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe and I'm going to turn it over to Kareem now to introduce himself. Thanks, Stacey. Um, I'm Karim Tharani. I'm an associate librarian at the University of Saskatchewan. I specialize in information technologies. I'm a um, department of uh, library systems and technology at the university library. Um, and I come from Treaty 6 land, where this is where my family lives and plays and earns and learns. So, and the land has been very uh, gracious to our family. So I need to acknowledge that too. So uh, we want to talk today about um, something um, called knowledge equity. And really uh, the conversation is around how we think about equity in the sphere of knowledge organization and metadata, and then how that interacts between uh, metadata uh, library work and then what that means for the Wikimedia projects and specifically the Wikisite project and Wikidata. And for both uh, Kareem and I, this work is, is quite important. It forms part of, of what we consider um, probably some core, core values that we hold in, in recognition of how important it is to um, how powerful it is to to organize knowledge and so what do we mean when we talk about knowledge equity oops and I can't change but there we go now I can change my slide so um, I actually first heard this term used in reference to the Wikimedia 2030 movement strategy which is uh, a way of considering sort of a strategic plan for the Wikimedia projects and I think something really important to recognize about doing work in Wikipedia or Wikidata or Wikisite or any of the Wikimedia sister projects is that they are, it is considered a movement and there's a whole community of people who work around these projects who are primarily volunteers. So the Wikimedia Foundation looks after part of the administration of the, um, of the, of the foundation. And then we have Wikimedia Deutschland, which looks after some of the infrastructure for uh, Wikidata. Um, and a lot of that, that planning, but really the core of how this all works, Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikisite, is a, is a huge number of volunteers. And so it's really conceptualized as a, as a community and, um, and sometimes as a movement, as a way of thinking about knowledge um, in the world. And so this strategy uh, was a way of thinking about how, how we move as a community towards 2030. And one of the, the large pieces of that strategy is connected to this idea of knowledge equity. So again, this is a social movement and it is about interacting not only with knowledge, but with other people. 
and knowledge equity calls us, as you can see on this, on this particular slide, and I won't read it all out, but we think about how knowledge really is about structures of power. Um, and whenever we have that circulation of power, whether it is in libraries, um, online, or even in our day-to-day -day lives, that um, these structures of power do privilege some communities over others. And so what does that mean in the, in the relation to knowledge? And how do we, in our the communities that, that do work um, in reference either to the Wikimedia projects or in libraries, think about those concerns about who is privileged in those power structures, who is left out, and how we can work <clears throat> to create better structures that actually uh, enable all communities to participate um, equally in in these uh, in these uh, um, structures. And so. For me, part of this work um, in connection to my work in libraries and on metadata and on Wikidata is thinking about how we can um, leverage or use the, the power of metadata to ensure that um, all kinds of knowledge is visible and accessible because uh, in a lot of times in libraries, that's, that's not the case. And so in our conversation um, today, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of those elements and what that means um, to both of us and how we think about um, how Wikidata and the Wikisite project can work to uh, change some of those power structures to help um, communities that might be marginalized in the ways that we typically or traditionally uh, organize knowledge. And so I'm just gonna pass it over to Kareem to talk a little bit about, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So yeah, and I really that. like uh, that definition. It sets the overarching tone of it being a movement. And what's also nice is that it has a timestamp on it. So in 10 years, maybe it needs to reinvent itself and we can assess ourselves whether we've been successful as a movement or not. But uh, prior to knowing all this movement that Stacy has shared with me, I, I kind of related to knowledge equity as a social justice issue, right? I mean, uh, <clears throat> And justice in libraries for me looks like um, um, a way to kind of ensure that the effort, the resources that we spend in libraries um, are not biased and they kind of provide equal footing to non-Western knowledges. I make this distinction between Western and non-Western knowledges, although it's, it's pretty binary, but it kind of gets the message across that library systems are are steeped into Western ways of thinking. So uh, when we see systemic um, barriers as librarians, at the very least, we can at least call them out and confront them, um, not in a confrontational sense, but in a, in a educational sense, in a sense of dialogue to, to kind of uh, start the conversation. Um, and one of the things um, that I've been very deliberate about in my work with uh, within the library, realizing that it's a Western institution, is to is to find ways to move conversations from either or or binary uh, positioning to a, a you know a common ground of collaboration and communication when things can move forward. Um, uh, that benefits both sides or provides equal, it's kind of a justice uh, movement, right? So it has to be just full for both or all stakeholders, not, not just one. And I think Wikidata has this built in from system, system or technology perspective, this uh, operationalization of collaboration, right? I mean, that's what, if you look at the platform, it's very collaborative. It has its flaws, but at least it, moves away from um, either or uh, kind of a, a positioning of this knowledge equity uh, issue. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, something to, to, to foreground our, our conversation, we're gonna move a little bit into some of that, you know, specifics um, that we see as barriers of, uh, to knowledge equity in our, in our library systems. Um, and at the very, Base, when we think about what, a what is a library and what does it mean to have a collection, we sort of get into this, this place almost right at the beginning of, of 
predicating something that we collect, so something that is brought in to a space. And often those things are, are physical, they're textual documents. And so right away, we already have a place where certain kinds of knowledge is privileged, that is knowledge that is documented in some fashion through some kind of media. And whether this is books or even um, recordings, uh, there's a certain way that that then um, privileges uh, the written word. It also, um, just the act of collecting something already puts us in a position where something is gathered and brought and may not always be reciprocal. So something, um, again, we want to bring through this conversation is to think about reciprocity as an action that's really important when we think about equity and how sometimes um, in spaces like uh, libraries, uh, whether they're national libraries or academic libraries, those are often connected to collecting all that is that is written or or research and sometimes those um, actions are problematic for certain kinds of communities. So really bringing that spirit of reciprocity to to thinking about what it means to connect um, equity in knowledge and then what is our role as people potentially working in libraries or working in community spaces to ensure that we're already, are always thinking about uh, reciprocal relationships with the knowledge communities that we work with. And we've had that, uh, we've had the advantage um, when we make this recording that we've been able to hear from some of our other speakers and we, and we hear continually about that need to help or serve uh, communities. And that also speaks to another part of the Wikimedia 2030 strategy, which predicates knowledge as service. And so these things are connected. And when we look at things like the um, UN Sustainable Development Goals, we have the same kind of themes throughout around how providing access to knowledge is part of bringing equity to the world. At the same time, something that we're going to talk a little bit more in a, in a bit about is that we have to also respect where knowledge needs to be kept in the community and where knowledge doesn't mean, uh, being equitable doesn't mean necessarily access to all things. Um, and so that's something else we're going to touch on throughout this talk that that sometimes equity doesn't come in the place of providing access to it. It is about respecting a community's knowledge and respecting what that community needs uh, in order to be it's about those power structures that we were talking about in the beginning and power isn't about taking something away from a community, especially for communities that have had a uh, long standing um, colonial relationships where there's often been a sort of relationship of extraction with a colonial power. So that's just something that as we go forward in this kind of work to really think about because often in relation to open access or into open movements, even when it comes to open data, there is a, a foregrounding of sort of the everything must be open all the time, but this is a yes, but we have to really predicate that that respect and and thinking about those power power relations. So now I'm going to turn it back to Kareem to talk about one of our first big themes, which is um, you know talking about systemic biases and barriers in in knowledge equity and specifically about what it means uh, that uh, Western knowledge organization systems are primarily what are used in libraries. Yeah, and, and um, I totally agree with having um, that sense of worldviews that, you know, Western worldview is not the only worldview. And it takes a while to develop that sense because, you know, we're like fish living in water. Uh, all you think is that this is natural, this is all there is. But, you know, if you kind of jump outside the water, you could see other existence in land or sea or, or, or in, um, you know, space. So it's, it's very difficult. And this is what happens, right? I mean, the structures are in place. So you get trained into Western school uh, in libraries and you come to libraries and the, there are systems in place, structures in place. One of the ways librarians kind of exercise is professional skills as to knowledge organization systems or KOSs, right? So these are not systems in the technology sense, but these are structures, power controls of how we organize knowledge. And what I've realized through my work is that these are uh, structures that were put in place to organize Western ways of knowing and uh, learning and Western ways of organizing materials, which not 
are not always conducive to non-Western knowledges, right? So if we have that awareness that it is a social construct within Western society, which uh, do not, like these, these systems or controls do not work for um, accessing oral knowledge, for example. So how can we kind of uh, bring that knowledge or awareness in the library systems to open up these structures to accommodate different ways of knowing different worldviews and different knowledge materials, right? Uh, so uh, the context of, even the context of open access, as Stacy mentioned, the context of universal systems, these are still limited into a certain realm, right? So universal systems does not mean that we have opened up um, our systems to non-English materials or non-Western materials. We have all these green, uh, these built-in grand vocabulary, but these are still limited by our language, by our worldview, which we need to kind of open up. And I, I like Wikidata in that sense because it kind of uh, shifts the power from one culture, let's say, or dominant culture, to to have voice from marginalized uh, knowledge bearers or knowledge keepers or knowledge communities. So, in a way, we're moving from very systemic. Um, or system-centric uh, controls to community-centric uh, controls. Uh, it has its flaws, I understand, and Stacy knows all about that too. <laughs> but uh, at least it's moving forward, right? It's moving from one controlled community to an open community. And, and we have the structures in place to make it more a, a collaborative um, organization of knowledge, I think. Yeah, and so when we talk uh, about this, um, you know, the, the systemic barriers or, or biases in our systems and, and um, when we talk about how the ways primarily knowledge is organized in libraries, it is along these Western ideas of what knowledge is. Um, and as we know, many of these systems were in um, like Library of Congress, uh, the ways that uh, descriptive rules were developed um, coming out of the idea of, of being able to, to capture everything on a catalog card that still sort of underpins how we understand how um, the standards used to describe um, information in most libraries do come from a very Western bias. And, and this is this is well known and and we always have this problem with a need to standardize data to be able to to um, allow for the the ease of uh, interaction of data this is one of the things about that is different about libraries um, than archives or museums is this need to to uh, exchange data because often in libraries we do have replication of collections across different libraries where archives and museums uh, special special collections tend to be unique and so there's not that same need to exchange data and so we always have this push and pull between this desire to have a universalizing system of organization so that we can aid that exchange of data, but then also at the same time, as soon as we start to, to universalize something, that's when we lose the ability to provide granularity or uniqueness or representing worldview, um, Kareem, as you talked about so well, that, that um, worldviews, non-Western worldviews are not well uh, documented. And not only that, the other thing is that coming from someone with a music background, lots of kinds of music do not fit in well with the ways that we typically, or uh, the ways that information has been standardized for libraries. For example, improvised music or music that is non-Western does not fit. And so when we come to thinking a uh, about how we can do things differently. Wikidata um, is a way that we can document uh, information in a different way, which is potentially more um, in line with how that, how that uh, material or that knowledge uh, needs to be represented because we can have multiple worldviews sitting next to each other. And this is the great advantage of something like linked data or structured data where we are coming down to things at the statement level rather than thinking through something at the record level. And it's that, that change in, in how we consider data that becomes really important. And something else that I think um, 
I've been doing a lot of thinking about lately, and I know Kareem, we've, we've talked a little bit about this, is the idea of, of metadata as being um, relational and about ensuring that we sort of are, are having good relationships in our data and that every time we have to document one set of relationships in according to most standard library systems, we're refuting a whole group of other relationships we're saying are not there or are not valuable. But we know that um, uh, that data is, doesn't, doesn't work that way. And so something else I, I think we want to make sure that we highlight in this talk is the connection between worldview and language and how those things are interconnected. We know that words uh, carry lots and lots of meaning with them. And every time we choose or use a word, that, that, that actually sparks a whole intersection of, of these different relationships. And so, Kareem, I know you've thought a lot about the, the importance of, of a multilingual environment or that connection between language and knowledge. And so I wonder if you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, I mean, if there's one thing that is a great barrier to knowledge equity, I think it's language. And, and it's, it's, it's understandable because um, most of our structures or control um, systems or KOSs, for example, are based on language semantics. So if the only language that we work with is English, all the worldview, all the built-in um, biases of the language come into uh, other structures um, automatically, right? So communities have different languages because they use language to simplify complex um, phenomena around them, right? Uh, with uh, their, their vocabulary, their own vocabulary, which makes sense to them. Um, and it has a purpose of bringing the community together, right? So what, uh, I've been uh, reading um, one of the professors who did a semantic analysis. Um, he's, a, he's a Japanese um, philosopher who did a semantic analysis of Arabic and English. So he was kind of navigating multiple realms of language. And one of the greatest examples that I find that he gave was about how we kind of discard knowledge or phenomena through use of language. So he gave an example of the word weeds in English, which means plants or herbs that we don't, are not desirable to us, right? But if you take another language, any non-Western language, the plants that are included in weeds have specific names because they serve the purpose for that community. So by calling them weeds, we have just you know, shun all that knowledge, all that relationship with nature, land into just undesirable, right? So that is the power of language. And if we can open up uh, systems or libraries to different semantic analysis of using different languages, then we can start bringing in worldviews from different perspectives. And Wikidata, at the very basic level at least, uh, it opens up the conversation. It it brings in different languages, and uh, you know that could be our entry into accommodating, uh, competing, or coexisting with other worldviews uh, other than just the dominant ones. Yeah, no, I think I think that's such an important point to think about when we talk about equity. Again, when we're bringing this back to the to ideas of power, the words that we choose to use or the language that we have to work in really is about uh, brings all those power structures along with them. So if you are forced to sort of always work in English and English dominates the landscape um, in many ways for libraries, we're talking in English right now, then that, then that does sort of refute a whole bunch of, of, uh, of different kinds of relationships that we might have or understand. And so, one of the really huge advantages that I see with wiki with Wikidata is uh, and Wikibase for that matter is this sort of multilingual by design action that it is not uh, designed like you're always translating. So that's one of the things that we know when you work in a language, you're not necessarily constantly translating. You are able to work in that language completely, which is a huge um, advantage for all kinds of reasons, especially when it comes to things like endangered languages or small languages where you want to reinforce being able to be in that language. We know that that's uh, a really important part of, of um, supporting uh, languages when you want to um, um, encourage people, again, when we're looking at, at smaller language specifically to be able to work in that area. 
And another way that that Wikidata supports equity when it comes to language is because the um, the information is encoded in in a sort of machine readable way. It's not dependent. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk with my hands, which is a bit hard to see it. But when you when you put data information into Wikidata, when you're creating a statement, you might be putting it in, let's say I'm putting it in English and the interface is English, but it actually is a machine readable form so that it really becomes dependent on the interface that I'm choosing. So this is really important from a machine standpoint because it also allows um, scholarship that may not be written in English to be much more visible on on the web and so this is where this connection to the Wikisite project is really important when we talk about a multilingual environment and metadata and equity because we know um, although I don't have studies at hand but that that you know English is privileged in a lot of ways scholarship coming out of certain institutions is privileged in a lot of ways or platforms and so if we can put uh, citations around research um, into uh, Wikidata, then it really um, makes that scholarship a lot more visible, which is which is really important when it comes to changing those power structures and who gets uh, seen and recognized and visible in a in a larger international context. And so, this becomes really important as well for even when we think about all kinds of literature. Or, or culture um, when we want to make those things visible uh, where barriers exist because of language or other kinds of um, systemic barriers. And this sort of leads us into our um, other conversation we wanted to talk about, which is the problem of commodifying um, knowledge or when knowledge is, um, we know as well, as much as we um, predicate uh, making knowledge free and open, that um, you know, often that it becomes something that is monetized or something that is uh, collected in a certain way. And, and Kareem, I wonder if you want to um, offer some some thoughts on that uh, topic. Yeah, and, and I mean, I can only talk from my experiences because I uh, kind of navigate Western and non-Western culture myself, and I've seen the relationship between. A uh, relationship between communities and knowledge um, uh, kind of have different aspects to it, right? So, from my my Indic or culture or, or Islamic culture or Eastern culture, if, and if I generalize, knowledge re relationship with knowledge is not about um, uh, you know just consume consuming or com commodifying or. It, knowledge is considered as sacred gift, right? And there are different kind of realms and levels of knowledge that, that some some knowledge is given to you, some knowledge you serialize, you materialize. So there's complex uh, relationship with knowledge, which um, somewhat is very uh, simplified in the Western culture. And I know I'm generalizing to the nth degree possible here, just to make a point that uh, knowledge exists. There's recognition of different realms uh, when it comes to knowledge. Um, so, um, and even when you talk about media, we are in the Western world, we privilege textual knowledge so much because our history is like that, right? So if, if knowledge is not written down, it's not regarded as real knowledge. So I, I kind of raise this question of what about oral knowledge? knowledge that is given from generation to generation, which may not be there to share, but it doesn't mean that it cannot be recognized. So, you know, describing something or recognizing something does not necessarily mean that you just share it away, it's open access. That is not the natural state of that knowledge, but its existence can still be recognized, privileged, right? So, so these differences are interesting. And Stacey, you kind of mentioned that too, that, uh, you know, open access and uh, public knowledge, these are still social constructs of the West, right? And so we have to find a way to, to kind of uh, use the Western constructs that are at our disposal to start recognizing different levels of knowledge or different access levels of knowledge uh, that are appropriate for different worldviews. So, I mean, that's something that I've struggled through <laughs> through through um, my research and my work, and I would say, and I should 
I mean, I, I feel strongly about this that as librarians, we've lost our agency to other partners who commodify knowledge and provide us metadata that we can simply load our system and make this knowledge accessible. I think librarians need to take their agency, reclaim this agency and then kind of use it for more for public service rather than just, you know, uh, partnering with vendors to, to paddle commodified knowledge. Sorry about the bitterness there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's shared. I think that, you know, I really like this idea of, of agency and, and, you know, there's, uh, again, one of these friction points, I think, for, for many um, in working in libraries is that we have the, the need for efficiencies, the need for doing things quickly, um, often pushes against the need to do things that um, better recognize the knowledges and the materials that we work with. You know, speaking as a, as a, for my, with my cataloger hat on, I know that's often a friction point. And so we frequently do have metadata that isn't necessarily the ideal that we would have. And so, um, and so one of the ways that we can can not only reclaim agency, but think about how we can, uh, again, maybe thinking about knowledge as service in, in recognition of knowledge equity, is if we use something like Wikidata or Wikibase and we make our bibliographic knowledge, uh, data, our citation data freely available on the web, then there, that also reduces other kinds of barriers because it's not just barriers that come in the, in the way of, um, the ways that knowledge is organized, but also just economic barriers or political barriers. We know that these are really um, big problems when we look at the international landscape when it comes to knowledge equity, because the platforms, Kareem, that you were just referring to that you know, researchers often have to use to access um, you know, journal information or, or even library collection data, those, those usually cost some kind of money or require a subscription. So the more that we can provide those, those metadata, um, uh, either citation data or bibliographic data freely, it really enables all kinds of libraries to better access uh, those records and then be able to use them to help make um, information more accessible to their communities, just, you know, no matter the, the sort of economic um, barriers. And so that, for me is a really important um, way that I think this work is so important for communities to think about how we reduce economic or other barriers for, for libraries. I've often told the story um, that my very first job was at a not-for-profit and I really didn't have a lot of resources. So being aware of the kinds of uh, costs or barriers involved in doing good metadata work or, or being able to provide access is really important. And so um, working as something like the Wikisite project or with Wikidata or with Wikibase is a mechanism for allowing other people to find the resources that you have in your and take advantage of the, the metadata that you're producing, but also that you can use in your library. So one of the things that certainly in the, the Wikidata library community that people are working on is the ability to move data between uh, something like the Wikidata platform and back into your library catalog system so that we have that ability to share data freely because it's completely possible from a technical standpoint. And so again, this is one of the things that does bring um, equity across our library systems and is a really important piece of, of um, where we want to go. So that is sort of leading into um, sort of our closing uh, in thinking about where do we want to go from here or where do we want want um, this project to, to go, um, why would we want libraries to be involved or librarians or library workers in the Wikisite or Wikidata projects in relation to equity and it is, a, is about all the things that we were talking about, being able to bring in other worldviews, thinking about opening up uh, data to wider use, um, thinking about supporting multilingual communities. I think those things are, are really important to me. And I'm going to turn it over to Kareem for some of uh, last words from, from him. Yeah, and thank you, Stacey. And I think we, we're kind of running out of time, so I'll keep this kind of short. I think one of the fears that I have, and Stacey, you may have a, a, have a position on this too, is that 
Wikidata is a great tool. It, it uh, kind of addresses the um, uh, barriers that exist in uh, our library systems. But there's also this fear of, again, replicating whatever we've been doing so far using the same. So, you know, creating same structures uh, using a different platform now. Although this platform is distributed, uh, but we're still thinking of um, structured knowledge, uh, commodified knowledge, describing it, and then distributing the metadata, right? So one of the questions or struggles I have that we live in digital age, so this should be the age of oral knowledge, right? Because with digital and oral, there's a, such a great um, kind of a synergy that you don't have to go through the same structures that textual knowledge has gone, right? It's like having a satellite uh, internet connection that you can bring to a very remote area. You don't have to go through cable and all that, right? So it's it's like it could be a revolutionizing um, description and discovery and uh, bringing in oral knowledge. Um, so that that is what kind of excites me. And then um, in my work a little bit, I was kind of uh, trying to come up with a framework of how non-Western knowledge, what are the components of non-Western knowledge um, that we should keep an eye on uh, or what are the components that will make it easier for uh, using Western technologies to kind of privilege uh, or provide equal footing to non-Western um, knowledge organization. So few things uh, that I've identified, I think it's the community, uh, collections, um, carrier. So we need to break the carrier or uh, artifact based Mm, kind of uh, approach to more of a content or work-based approach and then differentiating how knowledge is contained versus how knowledge is um, uh, conceptualized. So I think, and I, I kind of, uh, in my mind, I did a thought experiment and positioning or comparing that framework with Wikidata, uh, different projects and initiatives. And I think there's great hope. I mean, I'm very hopeful that Wikidata can can uh, take us uh, further into um, uh, realizing knowledge equity, the movement that you talked about at the beginning of the presentation. So 10 years, we have 10 years to shift the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that's a great a great place to end is a, is the is the hopeful um, you know and I, I am really hopeful for our communities in in general so well, not only the Wikidata or Wikimedia communities but I know this has been a um, a topic of conversation in lots of library communities well and talking about equity in relation to to cataloging and ethics in relation to cataloging so. So there's lots of, of ways that we can be recognizing um, the, the problems in our current systems and the, and the ways that we can find um, different pathways to provide um, ways of shifting those, those power relations that we were talking about at the beginning in terms of bringing along uh, better recognizing knowledge that is non-Western or might be marginalized for all, all kinds of uh, all kinds of reasons. So I think we are at the end of our of our time. I know we could both go on and on, but we will we will um, um, not right now. And I think uh, if we had a, a question maybe from from Carla, I think we can we can take that now. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for this huge work you are doing. Um, uh, it's very interesting because we are talking about equity. It is knowledge, uh, professional equity. This is also professional equity. So we belong to different countries. We belong to different uh, professional environment. No? So it's really interesting for me um, to have an insight, if you can address um, uh, some specific point about the work you do with librarians, it's very interesting the work framework, no? And uh, if you do specific action for librarian, and if you find uh, a difference uh, in the equity, no? Mm thinking social and professional um, because uh, uh, we know we can uh, participate to training session then we have to put 
to really build in our libraries. So if you find that when you train, then uh, there is a, 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 res a respective uh, work. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Carla. Yeah, that's a really, a really great, great question. I mean, I can, I can answer maybe from, from where you know where I sit, and then, and then maybe Kareem can, can talk about where he is. So, yeah, I think it is, um, you know, how do, how do we move that these, this, this talk to action, and where, do, what does that look like? And, and, you know, over the past um, couple of years, I do, I have given talks on this topic at different places, like. You know, the Wikidata um, conference, and I actually just gave a workshop a couple of weeks ago on sort of the issue around indigenous knowledge organization to um, to professionals and to to students. And um, I mean, part of it is just becoming aware of something. Once you become aware of something, then you you see it and you can can bring it to your work. Um, I also right now I'm chair of the Canadian Federation of Library Associations Indigenous Matters Committee and we're working specifically on the issue of Indigenous subject headings in Canada. So that is one of the, the areas that we're actually doing some work on and so that does require thinking about how we um, not only is it, is, is it having discussions but actually coming up with the terms, thinking about where, where we, we put those terms. So we have been talking about, about using Wikibase, for example, as one of those places. Um, there's another project that I work on um, uh, that's a digital humanities project that is, that is also um, using Wikibase to think about how we, we construct knowledge differently. So there are those places that you can, can have those um, real world bring, bringing the discussions into to being and then thinking about how you, how, you, how you bring those experiences also back to the community. And so it is trying to build those communities of conversation and it, and it is um, useful to think about how we bring them to the, to the Wikimedia communities as a whole and how we move those, that knowledge forward. And I know there's little, there's pockets of these conversations happening in different parts uh, of the world, but that's a really great question about how, when we talk about it, how does it actually um, impact our work? And so that's, that's one, one way I know that in where I sit in, in Canada, that this is a really active area around indigenous knowledge. And I know there's also people working on um, uh, cataloging ethics and this is there's a draft I know that by the time this video comes out it the draft will be moved on to maybe final version but 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 that's another area that people are, are doing some work in so I'm gonna let Kareem um, answer too yeah it's 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 it's, it's a, the question is at the core of our activities and I totally agree with that it's about communication education and collaboration but I find that fear is uh, is the underlying factor right so if the fear of offending somebody is so great that we end up doing nothing, right? So, and that's what I was kind of referring to when I said that it could be an either or. It doesn't have to be an either or. Through whatever roles we are in, like I, I work with systems, so I try to see existing systems, how it serves uh, the um, you know dominant knowledge, and I say, okay, this system can be bent a little bit to serve some other knowledge. So, so that's like a compromise solution which comes through communication. And to, um, to subdue the fear that we have, I think collaboration with the community is, is great. It is the key, I would say. Like right now we're focused on the artifacts of knowledge, the books and all that. I would say we should just go out to the owners or the community or the keepers of that knowledge and let them share their expertise and we bring our expertise of uh, organization and that partnership is, is, is what will get us further into uh, without um, uh, offending anybody, right? I mean, people at heart wanna help, but they are just kind of afraid that they might offend somebody because they don't know the culture or the worldview. And it is our duty to bring that communication and education as Stacy was alluding to. And, and there's great work going on. And I, I know Stacy's all over that, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> Likewise. No, so I think, that's, I think that's great. And so I think um, in, in closing, as we, as we come to the, the end of our time, I think I'll go back to, um, you know, to one of the, the Wikimedia uh, phrases, the be bold. So to speak to Kareem's uh, <laughs> challenge, I mean, I do hear that, that people want to work on equity issues, but sometimes are not sure where to go. So 
it's be bold, but at the center, it's about, again, about this idea of being, uh, of reciprocity, of, of being, um, you know, it isn't about taking knowledge and putting it online. It really is about creating relationships with communities and, and thinking about what does the community need, not about taking knowledge out of that community and making it accessible. Because if it's, that is um, potentially uh, not where we want to go. So again, thinking when we, when we talk about knowledge equity, it isn't about making absolutely everything accessible. It's about respecting those relationships and thinking about what it means to change those power structures. So on that, um, I also have the, the job of, uh, of, of closing us out today. So, so thank you for joining us for this uh, conversation on um, knowledge equity. Uh, uh, library metadata and uh, Wikidata, and I'm hoping that we have uh, many more conversations to come. Thank you. Thank you.